Hello, dear viewers. Welcome back to Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. We're going back to Granite Grant. And what do we have? What are we doing here? It appears we've ventured into the tomb. Hmm. Uh, what else do we have going on? Some good stuff, looks like. That's right, yeah, we just uh, finished up with some of a ziggurat, I believe. Which is pretty exciting. Not as far as I've gotten in a ziggurat, if I recall. 20 levels or so? Versus, I think 22 is where I died. Uh, with my f most powerful prior character. Um, that's right, we have various rings. Huh. How are our spells? Good, good, excellent. Ooh, no hunger cost. That's a plus. Uh, what if we do this? Oh, okay, so those extra points of intelligence are pretty relevant, it seems. Yeah, five extra points of intelligence. Okay, good to know. Yeah, okay, well... Fun, fun, fun. All right, so I think the best bet... Which runes do we have again? All the... All the, uh... Easily obtainable ones. So I guess it's back to Pandemonium. Seems like a good call. I think we want a little bit more... Yeah, we want more summoning skill before we take on the tombs. We want to let our... Minions soak up all the death curses that we can. Hmm. Okay, this seems like a reasonable spread. Fire magic is just going to make it easier to get. Let's do this. How about? Yeah, I like that a little bit more. Yeah, Conjurations is pretty close to being maxed out. We can always dump the last few levels. Uh, let's see. 14% on step from time. Good. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think Pandemonium is the right place for us to be. Let's check our consumables and whatnot. That's right. We've got a good number of things here. Uh, let's pick up three scrolls of recharging. Uh, two scrolls of remove curse. What else? Do we have scrolls of holy word? Eh. We did at one point. Let's get ourselves a scroll of identify as well. And that's probably about all that we need. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right, off we go. So not every level of Pandemonium has a rune. Oh, <laughs> poor butterfly. Uh, but we nonetheless wish to find as many as possible. Um, we have one of them. There are five in there. Uh, five runes in Pandemonium. Four in the hells, and one at the end of the tomb. But I think, I, I feel like Pandemonium is a little bit easier for us than either of those other options, so. Okay. Oh, hold up, scroll of Holy Word right off. That could be useful. Actually, before we burn things with fire. I 
an orange demon. <laughs> Interesting. All right. I am curious. Huh. Doesn't have the volume of the spells there. I think there's a way to examine your spells more specifically, but I cannot recall what it is. Did we kill two torturous demon spawn? That's interesting. Oh, I suppose that's a third that we didn't know about before. Very efficient at killing torturous demon spawn with this uh, bolt of fire. I suppose it's probably also at nearly maximum power, yeah. We are pretty strong. These guys are all immune to fire. So we can just bash. We're wearing a, a cloak of preservation now, so we don't have to worry quite as much about our consumables being destroyed. I, I really am annoyed that we can't wear something more exciting, but you gots to do what you gots to do. I think those blood saints are a little bit dangerous. So one thing I want to try and do is be a little more efficient with our spell casting. I don't know how we're going to go about that exactly, but I don't know. It just seems like a good idea. Green death we don't care about. They can't do really anything to us. They can do a little bit of physical damage, but that's about it. And we are pretty prepared to deal with physical damage. Armor class 53. Guaranteed damage reduction of some absurd amount. Let me see. Um, let me see just GDR bonuses. Uh... Yeah, we have exactly 50% global damage reduction, which is pretty darn good. It's 11 more than we would have if we were not a gargoyle. So uh, we are guaranteed to reduce all incoming damage by 26.5% or points, rather, 26.5 points of damage. And that's a lot. Uh, let's just blow them all up. Hmm. There we go. I see it was blocked by our fire vortex. What is our abjuration G? Okay. Something calls forth creatures from the tomb of the ancients. How annoying. Oh, a gelid corruptor, okay. Well, that's uh hmm. Very resistant to cold, okay. Whereas this is resistant to fire, immune to fire. So let's uh Let's take care of this guy first. Hmm. Have to get a little... Ah, uh, oh, shucks, our aura already ran out, eh? Curses. Maybe we should start carrying around some wands. Alternatively, we could train up evocations for a few levels. Uh, ugh. Lots of lots of things here causing us problems. Let's use one of our let's use this scroll of holy word. That ought to yeah get rid of things for us. Good, excellent. That was a little... See, that was wasteful spellcasting on my part. It got us into a position where we had to use a, a consumable just to 
get out of that situation. I mean, we probably could have survived otherwise, but I don't like messing around with probabilities in Pandemonium. Ice Fiends are tough. Bolt of Cold, Symbol of Torment. We should be fine, though. Yeah, hanging on to Iron Shot, I think, is a good idea. Cheaper than Lehudibs and has slightly better range. I suppose it kind of makes sense if you think about it. It's uh, Lehudibs is a heavier physical object or something like that. Though it does do <laughs> a big old boatload of damage. We can auto-explore on these sort of standard pandemonium levels. I'm, of course, assuming that this is a standard pandemonium level. Watch us run into Null Leg or something. One of the non-random pandemonium lords. Another option we have, of course, is training our maces and flail skills further. Or skill singular. Uh, so that we can do more damage that way, but I don't know. I don't, I don't feel that that's all that necessary. Oh, he hostily teleported us. That's fine. We've cleared enough of the level that I'm not worried about being dropped into the ton of, into the center of too many enemies. Why are we not flying? And just bash away. Ooh, what is that? That looks strong. Infernal Warmonger. Disrupts the magic of its foes. I'll show you magic of your foes. Um, what is this? A Grand Avatar. Huh, well, not too exciting. Um, uh, da, da, da. Can this hit it yet? No? Okay, shucks. There is something to be said for following Vehemet. Uh, for the range extension. It's a very powerful effect. Since many of these spells uh, are balanced around the fact that they have shorter range, and so if you extend that range, it makes some of them pretty strong, like fireballing things that you can't see, <laughs> and that therefore cannot see you. Since line of sight is reciprocal. Uh, but Vehemet is a little bit limited in his spell gifting, lim uh, limited to solely destructive spells. Though I find that those tend to be what I use most. Monstrous Black Sun, eh? Hmm. Wields powers of darkness. <laughs> okay. We have maximal negative energy resistance, so not too worried about draining attacks. It's a nice side effect of preparing for pain and torment. Uh, negative energy res resistance does reduce the damage from torment slightly, I believe. It's just not a lot. I remember mentioning in a prior video that I didn't know, of, I've, I'd never seen any other sources of torment resistance, and that's that's not entirely true. I mean, uh, negative energy resistance is a help, but it reduces the damage by something like 5% of your maximal hit points or something. So it's torment 
blast down 45% instead of 50%. And with your torment resistance slightly more, I think there's some uh, some specific amount. Uh, Anyway, we already take reduced damage from Torment, which makes this a lot easier. We take 25% of our hit points in damage instead of 50%, which is good because we don't have a super ton of hit points to play around with anyway. 188 as opposed to the 200 and some odd that we would have if we were not a gargoyle. Uh, I guess that'd be, it'd be around 224, something like that. Done exploring. Okay, so we've got some entrances to other places in Pandemonium, and then uh, a little exit through the abyss. Hmm. Let's go big boom booms. Shatter. Let's try it again. Okay. Cleared some stuff out of the way of the Balrog, which was our goal there. Mostly just continuing to troll around here for some experience. Because, you know, experience is nice. The more skills we have maxed out, the more prepared we will be the next time we take on a ziggurat. Which will be about as soon as we get the opportunity to. First one I see, I'm going to clear out the level one. Ziggurats have a an 8% chance of appearing on any given pandemonium level. So, you know, it might be a little while. Probably will be a little while. I don't know if there's any difference between the portals. I think it's, I think they may all be identical. But if a portal is in a cool looking spot like that, you know, like, almost like it's a little vault. I'm going to give it a shot over one of the ones that's just strewn about randomly. How did that come into view? Nah, whatever. Just blast them all down. Again, we are long past the point where any individual monster is super threatening to us. Always lots of monsters in Pandemonium that you don't catch on your first run around the level. I think they just move around a lot, maybe. Or maybe they just generate spontaneously. It's entirely possible. Spellcasting up to level 4, or 24, rather. I guess our spell, bo spell books are all at home. And we're off to another level of Pandemonium. There we go. As you may have noticed, there was no Pandemonium Lord on that level. Or at least, if there was, we played uh, round and round the Mulberry Bush with it. Which, you know, is fine. I don't need to kill everything in all of these levels. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit tiresome. Mostly I'm just making sure that we explore the entire level so that we uh, don't miss a rune. If we miss a rune, we can never get it again, and that would be very, very sad. Because I want to make this a 15 rune run. I really want to get to the bottom of a ziggurat, but I think that if we are able to get to the bottom of a ziggurat, we will also be able to grab all 15 runes. I, I think that's perfectly reasonable. Doi, 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 doi. Not worried about hellhounds particularly. Two pips of, two pips of resist fire is fine. Uh, one more would be nice, but we're not going to go out of our way to acquire it. Or rather, the uh, the things that we're using in place of additional fire resistance are good enough that we don't want to get rid of them. I feel like negative energy resistance is slightly more important. And even if it's 
equally important and not slightly more important um, the additional armor class of our Pearl Dragon armor would tip me in its favor anyway. Since not only does it have two more base armor class, but our armor skill scales up with it better because of that armor class. Uh, your, your armor skill scales up on based on the base armor class of your armor, so if you increase you know, a, a, a Pearl Dragon Armor base armor class 10 is going to be better than a uh, than a Fire Dragon Armor base armor class 8 with two additional um, points of enchantment in it. Bash, bash, bash. A little risky there, but we were standing near a uh, a way out, and we have some scrolls of blinking here that the ziggurat was kind enough to provide us with. Uh, let's not teleport randomly. I have not a scroll or not explored enough of this level to wish to uh, flit about randomly. So we read a scroll of teleport to cancel the effect. Same thing will work for your scrolls, by the way. As in, if you start to teleport, decide you don't want to, you can correct that error. Demon had some uh, had some toughness to it. Some dodginess. Twina. Ugly looking beast. That's kind of duck out of the way here. Stealth is being really useful to us uh, as far as getting out of the way of nasty, nasty things. Just prevents them from noticing us for a little bit. Keiko demons are a little bit rough for us because we can. Oh, geez. <laughs> because uh, it can malmutate us, apparently. Yikes. Well, good thing we have answers to that. The toenail golem. Ew. Gross. Huh, weird. Well, let's kill it. Oh, we left all of our potions of mutation curing at home, didn't we? Well, I suppose next time we encounter one of those demons, we should... Uh, put on our amulet of resist mutation. Clarity is nice... Extra point of intelligence is nice, so I think it's reasonable to leave that on generally, but... The armor fits poorly on our strangely shaped body, just reduces the amount of armor we get from our... armor, our body armor, which, as you can see, is about a five-point difference there. So not too bad. I mean, none of these mutations are awful. The slow healing when monsters are visible is, I guess, the worst of those. And while our uh, while the spell power bonus from this wild magic mutation is nice, I suppose, um, there are other benefits to having spells be easy to cast that. Uh, I feel like that's kind of a neutral mutation. We, we have to work just as much to make up for it as we do to benefit from it. And also, um, eventually our spell power does max out, and we, we are reaching that point once we hit you know max level with all of our spell skills and 
uh, and have some more intelligence boosting items. Intelligence scales up pretty well. There's, unless you're playing a just a pure fighter, never casting any spells type, intelligence is the way to go. Executioners are really rough for traditional spellcasters, but not for us with our tank spellcaster build. Traditional spellcasters being those that train up their spell skills before they train up any form of, of martial combat, be it offensive or defensive. Which is generally a better way to go about spell casting. Ooh, is that an evening star? Did we finally find one? Yeah, good. Okay, excellent. So we can build a weapon now. Which is nice. And we will be returning to our stash after this level anyway to cure our malmutations. We'll probably have to get there via the abyss. Seems to be more uncommon than I previously thought to have exits right back to the dungeon. Which, you know, is fine. If you're if you're wandering about in pandemonium, chances are pretty good that you're able to deal with the abyss. Let's just blow some stuff up. There we go. Of course, that brought everything running. And we'll kind of bash at things for a while and then blow everything up again. Oh, an enchanted evening star, even. We go the whole game without finding any evening stars, and then all of a sudden we get two in the same level. Go figure. Doi, 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 doi. We'll go ahead and keep the non-enchanted one in case this one is uh, negatively bonused. I suppose we haven't seen the Pandemonium Lord in this level yet, so we should be a little careful. Pandemonium Lords are pretty variable in power, I've discovered. Some of them are just big, stompy melee creatures, which... At this point of the game, you shouldn't worry about. Ah, here is actually an opportunity for us to do something potentially quite efficient and maybe bad. We're going to drink the potion of mutation there. Because when you have a number of bad mutations, you have... Well, a number, any number of, a number of any kind of mutations. Whenever you gain further mutations, there's a chance that it will instead... Huh. Well, we did get a pip of fire resistance. But our metabolism further sped up, and we lost a couple of points of strength. So we will quaff potions of cure mutation without uh, a plum. And if we lose those good mutations, so be it. If we keep them neat, we'll take it. Oh dear. Metabolism is lightning fast. We really should put on this amulet of resist mutation. I, I like that other amulet, but I think it's come to the point where we're encountering things frequently enough that mutate us that we don't want to... Uh, really take it for granted. This does boost our... Oh, well our, well, our intelligence is drained as well, so... Hunger cost up, spell power down, etc., etc. 
just making sure now that we're not missing out on any uh, any runes that may be on this level, though I doubt that there are any at this point. Yeah, I forget that Nikoxix or Nikoxix uh, can mutate us. I often forget that. At this point in the game, a lightning fast metabolism isn't the end of the world by any means. Uh, fighting up to level 24, 190 hit points, okay. And in fact, if uh, if we cure the majority of our mutations and the fast metabolism is the only one remaining, I mean, granted, yes, I would like to get it down to something less than lightning fast, because that's a little inconvenient, but... Um, it's not the end of the world. We more are concerned about the armor class and the slow healing, and especially this um, intelligence reduction. That one is completely unacceptable. A lot of uh, a lot of critters in this particular level. A lot of enemies. Not too much of a concern. Bash, 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 bash the whole day long. Lots of ice fiends here. Domination. I'm playing a little bit fast and loose. I should perhaps be somewhat more careful. In fact, I assuredly should be more careful. Can't ever hurt to be too careful. Well, sometimes it can. Being careful is always good, except when it isn't. Uh, the reason why I'm excited about Evening Stars, I don't think I've mentioned it in, in some time, is that they are the highest, uh, highest base damage mace slash flail that is one-handed. And it's actually one of the highest base damage one-handed weapons, period. I think there are uh, one or two, maybe, that are a bit better. I think maybe O-Demon Blades, possibly. Not sure. Anyway, 15 base damage. Very, very good. Um, because we really like our shield, it's quite convenient for us to block things. Adds a bunch of durability to us that uh, we might not otherwise have access to. There are some spells that can mimic shield effects and whatnot, but... Meh. Whatevs. We'd rather have the spell levels for the spells that we have, which are all incredibly useful. We've even made use of uh, apportation, though we didn't for the longest time. We mostly just bashed our way right up to things and then grabbed it. Hmm. I can tell I'm playing fast and loose because I'm missing things. 
little bit, a little bit sleepy. But I think I have enough oomph to finish off this level of pandemonium, get us back to our stash, get us cured of all these disgusting mutations. If you ever are in quite the pinch, negative mutation-wise, you don't have any potions of cure mutation left, and you've got some really, really bad ones, you can switch to Zen, work up some piety with that particular god, and then you get to... Um, cure all of your mutations, your, I think all mutations, period, not just negative ones. Cure all mutations once, but you only get one shot at it, which is a little bit of a shame. Another trick you can do is just to, uh, um, Drink a, a whole bucket full of um, potions of mutation and hope that eventually, on balance, you uh, come out ahead on the roulette. Hope that you ditch enough of the bad ones that the good ones make up for the ones that remain. And there are some ways to go about that. Uh, there is a particular wizard laboratory that uh, contains a number of uh, high number of potions mutation, fifteen or twenty, something like that. And you can you can have some fun with roulette that way for certain. Lots of critters around here. Shatter... I'm actually not all that impressed with Shatter thus far. It's good. It's very good. I just don't think it's as good as Tornado. A lot of monstery type things on this level. I do I wonder if I wonder if these things aren't infinite and I'm just kind of flailing about wasting my time. Uh, let's go up here and see what this little corner of things has to offer. Yeah. I'll just kind of kill a few things on the way. Many, many demons. Nope, okay. Pretty sure that's basically all of this level. Yeah, no rune for us this time, it appears, but eh, we got some experience. A little incremental power increase, which is fine, nothing to complain about. It's partly what Pandemonium is for, is giving you a much needed place to acquire loot and experience. There are very few places in the game where you can actually grind in the harshest meaning of the term, where you can just repetitively perform the same action over and over again in order to increase your power beyond what it would normally be for your progression point. 
Um, but let's, uh, head back towards our exit here, I think. We've seen what we came to see here. And I would like to recover my stats. Thank you very much. Okay. That's nice. A few things for us. Free loot. Never say no. Ultra of Luganu. Ganu. There's actually usually an exit nearby Altars of Luganu. Ah, Kiku Bakutka making an appearance. God of necromantic magic. Suddenly pulled to a different region of the abyss. That's just swell. Again, not super worried about the abyss. But I would like to get out of here sooner rather than later. Boy, but boy, 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 boy. There it is. Excellent. Back to the stash to heal up and whatnot. And this this will be the the end of the uh, important parts of the video. So feel free to tune out as per the usual arrangement here. Though it could be fun for you to stick around and see what mutations we end up with, I certainly won't insist, nor even say that it's necessary. A little too tired to ramble for too terribly long about things, but okay. We have ten potions of cure mutation. That's insane. Um. Okay, we lost our fire resistance. That's too bad. No. Oh. We lost all of our mutations. Well, that does make things easier to cast. Uh, I did drop our spell power significantly, which is too bad. That's a shame. But at least now we can start afresh. Ah, well. I was kind of hoping we'd hang on to some of the, to those two beneficial mutations. But what can you do? It's fine having no mutations at all. So now we get to build ourselves a better basher. Evening Star of Protection. Hmm. I don't think that's good enough. So let's see. Brand weapon. Enchant weapons 1, 2, and 3. Flaming is pretty good. Uh, though I feel like we can do better. No, don't want protection. Don't want crushing. Really, we want freezing. We don't want vampirism. Don't want venom. There's a little... Electricity is fine. We'll stick with electricity just because we only have one scroll left, and I don't want to uh, end up with some... Well, do we want to do the roulette one more time. Evening stars. Point, 0 0.7. Meh. We'll give it a shot. Eh, protection. All right, whatever. Well, that's a little too bad, but it does mean that any scrolls of branding we find from here on out, we can just read and sort of play the roulette. 
Oh, and we can, let's see, drop off this evening star. Uh, working its way up here. A lot of failures, which is frustrating. I believe it can be maximally enchanted to plus nine. Yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe... Want that last point of damage? I want it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so. Uh, oh, and let's drink a potion of restore abilities. Alright, cool. So, plus nine, plus nine, evening star. Makes it 24 damage, which is nice. Versus, is this 20 damage? So an additional 4 damage. Uh, we lose a pip of fire resistance and negative energy resistance. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to reassign this to B and this to A. So now we can swap back and forth between our sort of our long range weapon and our short range weapon. We'll bash things in the face with the evening star when it gets close, but before then we'll use uh, this one for the resistances. That's how it'll go. All right, dear viewers, that's enough for now. I'm going to probably go to bed or something. Um, get rid of this sleepiness. But regardless, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.